Hello and welcome to the history of Star Trek. Today we're trying something new. We're going to cover Pavel Chekhov's background information. Chekhov was played by Walter Koenig, who joined the cast of Star Trek at the beginning of the season two and filled in for what was originally intended to be the roles for Hurgado Sulu, while George Takei spent much of his time involved in filming the Green Berets during Season 2. According to Gene L. Kuhn in his Making of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry wanted to add a young Englishman to appeal to the younger demographics. However, he received a written complaint from Russian sources who complained that Star Trek, though trying to fashion a future where the world was united, was ignoring the USSR, which at that time was the leader of the space race. Roddenberry soon after altered his English youth into Chekhov. On the video release of William Shatner's Star Trek Memories, Walter Koning himself said that the Russians didn't say anything about there being no Russians on the Enterprise, and the Parvada article that Roddenberry and Kuhn referred to likely didn't exist because at the height of the Cold War, no American programming was airing in Russia. According to Koning, the character was created to add a Davy Jones-like appeal to the show, and the Russian heritage was added by Roddenberry because he wanted to honor the fact that the Russians were the first people in space. In his first couple of episodes, Koing indeed wore a monkey-style wig to look more like Davy Jones. Ironically, during the time of TOS in the late 60s, Soviet teens sporting this look were called Harrys and were revealed as dangerous rebels by their elders. They were often arrested and had to have their hair cut off by the police. Chekhov was the only main character from Star Trek not to appear in Star Trek the Animated Series, due to budget constraints. He was briefly written into the series, appearing as an ensign in the first draft script of yesteryear, though his role in that story was rewritten for the newly created character Ensign Bates. Despite Chekhov's exclusion, StarTrek.com has a TAS Chekhov biography page explaining what he was up to away from the Enterprise in the years of the animated series. Koing, however, was not entirely absent from the series. He did provide the script for The Infinite Vulcan. Chekhov was referenced in the first draft of the script of Relics, an episode from the sixth season of Star Trek The Next Generation. Moments after Scott rematerialized on the USS Jalolin in the 24th century, he started to suggest to LaForge that perhaps he and Chekhov could do something related to salvaging the Jalolin. However, Scott trailed off not finishing his sentence upon seeing Worf. There was no mention of Chekhov in the final draft of the script, and he is not referenced in the final version of the installment either. A 24th century version of Pavel Chekhov was briefly planned to feature in an episode that was conceived but not filmed for the seventh season of Next Generation. Writer Naren Skanker recalled how Chekhov was portrayed in the story. He returns as a prisoner of war from a planet where he was imprisoned for many years and finally released. Now he has come back as an ambassador to help the Federation open up diplomatic relations, like Vietnam, essentially. Chekhov would have also, in the same story, formed a friendship with Worf, who had likewise been brought up in Russia. Skanker concluded, Throughout the course of the negotiations with these people, it appears as though Chekhov is sabotaging them. It turns out he's plotting to use the Enterprise to lay waste to their capital for revenge and to screw things up for the Federation because he feels that they abandoned him and let the people torture him. In the first draft script of Star Trek Generations, Chekhov has a total of three lines. He was aboard the Enterprise B when it encountered the El Orion vessels caught in the Nexus, though he didn't have any dialogue on the Enterprise's bridge after being recruited as a nurse by Dr. McCoy and accompanying him to the Enterprise B sickbay with the intentions of treating the El Orion survivors. Chekhov reported to McCoy while scanning the El Orions with the tricorder that he had found only minor injuries so far. Some of the people Chekhov scanned was Dr. Tholian Sorin, who roughly grabbed him. Chekhov tried to assure Sorin, who was desperate to return to the Nexus, that he was safe on the Enterprise. However, Chekhov began to be attacked by Sorin, so McCoy rendered Sorin unconscious with a hypospray before he could seriously wound Chekhov. Puzzled, Chekhov asked McCoy what Sorin was talking about, though McCoy didn't know. Chekhov returned to the bridge of the Enterprise B and remained there until the setting of the script changed. In Star Trek Generations, Chekhov is briefly referred to as Captain Chekhov by one of the reporters on the Enterprise B. 
Chekhov was referred to in the final draft script, but not in the first draft as Commander. He is also shown wearing a Commander's pin on screen. By the time Star Trek Generations came about, Walter Koning felt it was time to say goodbye to the character of Chekhov, having believed that Star Trek VI would have been Chekhov's last appearance. As it turns out, the amount of context which was ultimately given to Chekhov to say and to do in Generations also pleased Koning. He said, I found this attractive and appealing because there is a couple of personal moments that Chekhov has in this story that were absent in what was supposed to be our last appearance. And although the story certainly isn't about Chekhov, nor is any one page about Chekhov, still I feel that I have been given the opportunity to invest some character into the dialogue and to leave an impression of Chekhov's personality on screen. One of Chekhov's costumes was added to the ScienceFictionArchives.com collection and was showcased at Paris Science Museum during 2010 through 2011 exhibit Space and Fiction, Imagination Meets Reality. Apocrypha. In the 11th UK annual story, Chekhov says that he took the same radio courses as Uhura, presumably at Starfleet Academy. According to Star Trek II biographies, Chekhov was born March 6, 2245. In the Star Trek Starfleet Academy game, Chekhov claims that prior to joining the Enterprise, he was stationed on the planet Bindari 4, where he had a commanding officer who believed getting angry was unprofessional and bottling up her rage until it exploded. He also authored several simulation missions used at the Academy. After Chekhov's final appearance in Generations, circa 2293, and the reference that a starship would be named after him by 2367, no canon information exists on how he lived out the rest of his days, or what fate he met. According to The Sundered, the first book in Star Trek The Lost Era series, Chekhov served as an executive officer on the USS Excelsior. From 2293 through at least the last part of 2298, Chekhov is mentioned in TNG-era novels from pocket books, such as Judith and Garfield Reith Stevens' Federation. That novel mentioned him becoming an admiral after commanding both the USS Potemkin and the USS Sidona. The Reeve Stevens collaboration was William Shatner on The Return, which had Chekhov becoming a fleet admiral. In Exodus, a novel in the Star Trek Vulcan Soul series by Joseph Sherman and Susan Schwartz, one plot thread had Chekhov still be alive by the time of the Dominion War along with Admiral Uhura. The Fate of the Unknown briefly depicts Chekhov's longing for a new direction in his life after the events of the Way to Eden, and ends with him deciding to transfer for additional security training to be replaced on the Enterprise by Rx Naif. The beginning of the novel, The Later Fire, depicts his leaving the Enterprise for training at Starfleet Academy's Reed Annex in London, presumably a tip of the hat to Malcolm Reed, and his subsequent replacement by newly transferred Erics. Chekhov returns in the Agents of Yesterday expansion for Star Trek Online, again voiced by Walter Cohen. After the events of the Undiscovered Country, he eventually becomes a captain, and even later in his life becomes a temporal agent, sometimes working alongside Daniels. Chekhov is aided by the player character and removes a Nakul bomb from the Enterprise and places it on board the Orion scout ship that attacks during the trip to the Babel Conference. He later leads Starfleet and allied forces against the Temporal Liberation Front in the Battle of Praska V, joining with the players and unwitting Temporal Agent Montgomery Scott to use the Taksu Tot against the Sphere Builders. Thank you for watching the background information history of Pavel Chakov. Chakov. Thank you for watching the background information. <laughs> Thank you for watching the background information of Pavel Chaka. Chak Chekhov. Thank you for watching the background information of Pavel Chekhov. Special thanks to Memory Alpha for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. Oh, and um, if you want more of these background informations, leave it in the comments. I read all of them. And it really helps out while uh, planning new episodes and things. If you don't like it, leave that in the comment. Uh, I'm planning on making a, uh, a real history of Chekhov later. Anyways, uh, again, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.